Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be demonstrating how to install an XSPC Raystorm CPU block on a, on a uh, socket 1155 motherboard. So uh, get ready and uh, I'll take you step by step on how to install this uh, CPU water block. And uh, first off I'll go over what you're going to need. Of course you're going to need your water block. I have mine here and I already have a few barbs, a couple barbs attached already. Um, your mounting hardware includes a uh, Teflon washer, a metal washer, a spring, and then your screws. This is a double action screw, so when you fir in first install the water block onto the CPU, or rather onto the motherboard, excuse me, you want to make sure this uh, bottom screw is all the way up against the top one because this is what you're going to use to actually tighten down the um, block onto the CPU once you get it mounted. Um, got our thermal compound. Uh, XSPC comes with uh, this K2 thermal compound and you're going to need your back plate. Uh, this is the 1155 back plate and I've had a couple people ask me about this because uh, right, the XSPC has uh, changed their design a little bit from uh, what it used to be and uh, it used to have an adhesive strip all along the sides and now it's just these little donuts around the mounting posts so uh, we'll go over doing that uh, here in a couple minutes and uh, I got my motherboard and my computer up here just out of shot uh, the motherboard is an Asus uh, Maximus 4 Gene Z Gen 3 and I'm going to be installing an uh, i5 3570k processor onto this and uh, we'll see how it goes. So uh, I'll be back in a second with the uh, mounting of the back plate. Okay, here we are getting ready to mount the back plate onto the back of the motherboard. As you can see here, this case comes with a nice uh, cutout so I can access the back of the motherboard without having to remove it. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Uh, the, the back plate fits on fairly easily. As you can see it just kind of drops into place right there. We'll remove the adhesive stickers and uh, get this thing attached. So let's go ahead and uh, do that real quick. Flip it over and then you just want to get these stickers removed like so. And uh, once we get these off, we'll go ahead and lay this down onto the back of the motherboard. Get it into place. Put a little bit of pressure on it. And it should be solid. Doesn't feel like it's going anywhere. So now we can go ahead and uh, start preparing to mount the CPU. Be back. Okay guys, I'm back. I have the back plate mounted and I turned the case over and lo and behold the back plate fell off. Those little donut adhesive things do not stick very well so I'm going to show you what I did to help me out until I get it done. Put a little bit of painters tape. This is just low tack tape just to hold it into place. When I'm done I can remove it. Okay so here's our processor. It is an i5 uh, 3570K and uh, we'll go ahead and get these this mounted into the CPU and uh, get the block mounted. So first off, as you can see, I still have my protective cover. You want to leave this on at all times without a CPU in there because you don't want to bend up any of these pins. Just remove it very carefully. Now we'll go ahead and release the latch. Flip it up. And we'll go ahead and get our CPU mounted. Just drops right into place, like so. Don't need to apply any pressure or anything. You don't want to bend up those pins. Resecure it, and now we're good. We can go ahead and get our thermal paste applied to the CPU. We've got our XSPC K2, and I will just place a blob in the middle, like so. 
and we'll get the block mounted. We'll just uh, drop this straight down onto the CPU, lining up our holes, and then we will start our hardware. I'm using an alternated star pattern so that we don't apply too much force onto any one side. We'll go ahead and try to apply a little bit of extra pressure on the back plate. And that did the trick. Let's see if we can get this one. Yes. Okay. So we'll go ahead and Get all these tightened up as much as you can, applying about a quarter turn on each post until they're nice and tight. Okay, now that we've got all the uh, posts tightened up, we can go ahead and give a couple turns on these tightening posts just to uh, get a little bit more pressure down on the block. And I think that'll be it. So there we go. The uh, race torn block mounted onto an 1155 socket. Thanks for checking out my uh, how-to video on installing the Raystorm block and uh, I'll catch you guys next time.